Hello everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. And today it's Tag Tuesday, so we're going to be doing a tag. And this is the Mid-Year Freakout Tag, one of my favourite tags for the year. Stay tuned. Okay everyone, so this is a mid-year freak-out tag. Uh, and this is a tag that I did last year, I think I'm going to do every year. I wasn't tagged by anyone, um, and I'm sorry I don't have the names of the people that created this tag, but I'll put them in the description box down below. And basically what this tag is all about is that it looks at my reading up to this point in the year, the best books I've read, surprises, the worst books, and I've added a few things on just for fun as well. Um, and I've saw some of the booktubers, the 13 prompts, and they just discussed other things as well, uh, like my favorite video and other stuff like that and plans for the future. So yeah, everyone, let's get going. Okay, one question I just added there before we start with the prompts. Just looking at how my reading has gone so far this year. Um, I've read 53 books this year so far, according to Goodreads. Initially, and it's quite amusing, uh, at the beginning of the year, my Goodreads goal was 150 books because I was doing the Read What Your Own Challenge and I thought, I'm going to nail this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nail those books. But it doesn't work like that. And it went from 150 and down to 120. And now I've decided, you know what, I'm not going to put pressure on myself with Goodreads. Um, I just made it 100 books, which I should be able to finish fairly easily. Uh, so yeah. 53 books so far this year. Okay, so there are actually 13 prompts, which I've made 16. I've added a few things at the end of the video. And prompt number one says, what is the best book you've read so far in 2024? And for me, that is a recent read, and that is Maggie's Grave by David Sodergren. Now, I absolutely love the horror. Uh, just an awesome folk horror tale. And Maggie's Grave <laughs> blew me away first chapter you just get drawn in straight away um, it just it kicks you in the guts at some time in the past um, and this woman this pregnant woman basically everyone is calling her a witch and I'm not going to tell you too much about that chapter but yeah it's pretty hectic and then you fast forward I'm not sure how many years and it's this ghost town and uh, there's about 46 people living in the town and a lot of them are teenagers, I think it's about a group of eight teenagers. Um, and yeah, and then it's a slow build up. And eventually you find out that the only thing worth visiting in this town really is this grave on top of the town. It says Maggie Wall buried here as a witch. And all I can say is that when the shit hits the fan, it really hits the fan. Um, and it's fast paced, it's incredibly tense. And it's incredibly fun and gory as well, with some of the most absolutely dramatic kills you'll ever see in horror. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't put it down. Absolutely awesome book. And I'm going to read a lot more of David Sodergren in the future. So that is Maggie's Grave. Prop number two is the best sequel you've read this year. I don't normally read sequels. I'm not a fantasy reader. Well, I'm starting to become a little bit more of a fantasy reader. But there's two that I can think of, and just a special mention is Return to the Black Farm, a sequel to The Black Farm by Elias Witherow. And I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one. Uh, it's just both incredibly disturbing uh, novels, uh, very splatterpunk, very, very dark. Uh, but yeah, that's the first one. Uh, the second one is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and all its sequels. And I've got two here, and I've got a whole lot somewhere else, um, including the complete volume. And this was a little bit of a, a fun read between all the horror. It's just an awesome palette cleanser, and it's a classic sci-fi fantasy humor. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll always love The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay, prop number three is a new release that you haven't read yet, uh, but that you still want to. Um, 
Yeah, I don't normally go for new releases, but one that's already out, that's been raved about, is You Like It Darker by Stephen King. And all I've seen on Booktube is that people, as I said, rave about this book, this collection of short stories. And yeah, I definitely want to get my hands on that uh, pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, that's You Like It, you like it Darker. And number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Yeah, I just don't look at those. Um, I don't look at those. I don't buy books as soon as they're released. It's just not affordable. Um, I like to go shopping in our second-hand store. Okay, I could get them on Kindle, but even there, I, I wait till they're priced down a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm not a new release kind of person. Okay, number five is the biggest disappointment. Uh, now, it's very important to differentiate this between the worst book. Biggest disappointment doesn't mean the worst book that I read so far this year. For me it means a book that I was expecting a lot from and it didn't live up to expectations. Uh, and, and with that I'm going to go with Nest of Nightmares from Liza Tuttle. And yeah, it, I just worked it up in my head because it's, it's one of the books in Paperbacks from Hell um, by Grady Hendrix. And I just heard it had such a reputation, just an excellent collection of stories. And I had, had actually read a short story by her already, which I loved. But this collection was such a mis mixed bag, it let me down. Maybe because I was working up in my head about how awesome it was going to be. And so it wasn't the worst book I read, but it let me down the most. I was disappointed. Um, although there are a couple of good stories in there. Oh, just few and far between, and I think her writing style doesn't mesh, didn't mesh with me. Um, they're very psychological, which is good, but it's just something about the way that she wrote these stories. That, yeah, a little bit of a disappointment. Okay, the next one is Bigger Surprise uh, of the year so far, and I've got two of these. Uh, the first one being, it was a recommendation from one of my subscribers, a huge recommendation, said I absolutely love it. And he was right. And that is a short stay in hell by Stephen Peck. Um, at the length, and I've spoken about this book numerous times. It's just such a short book, just over a hundred pages. And it blew my socks off. And it haunted me for days afterwards. I could not stop thinking about this existential horror. I'm not going to say what it's about. Um, it's a library that's like hell. But man, it is so many things. It's disturbing beautifully written and as I say it's it just it's a bit of a mind trip and at the end I could not st stop thinking about it um, and I highly highly recommend you read it and I'd love to know what you think about it. Okay the second big surprise was Outside of My Comfort Zone and it was Sherlock Holmes. Um, There's four great novels. The first one is uh, A Study in Scarlet and I absolutely loved it. Uh, what a great mystery adventure um, in my first introduction to the characters of Holmes and Watson and they were so intriguing and so interesting um, and just the story itself as well it was kind of divided into two parts and I loved it um, I did speak about it I spoke about all these books early on in the year so I'm not giving a review of every one of them but it's just it was such a nice pleasant detour into the kind of murder mystery yeah, genre Okay, next up we got a uh, favorite new author, um, either debut or new to you. Now, there's a lot of authors I've discovered since being a booktuber. Um, probably my favorite is Chad Lutsky, and you've got Keelan Patrick Burke, got some other authors as well. Favorite author that I discovered in these first six months of the year, first book that I read by her, is Hayley Piper, um, and that is The Unfortunate Elements of My Anatomy. Now this is just so dark, so imaginative, so creepy and weird uh, and all of these books, all of these stories in this book are so well written and they go off to all such fantastical places um, and you know there's a feminist thing about them that is so awesome as well and she's writing from perspectives. Um, I absolutely loved this collection and I can't wait to read her novels and I think the first one I'm going to look at is The Worm and His Kings. It sounds really good. Okay, number eight is newest fictional crush. Uh, yeah, I, I actually honestly, seriously don't have one. 
And yeah, I'm a horror reader, so I don't read romance. Uh, maybe I used to have a crush on some fantasy books, but even now the idea of having a crush on a book character doesn't really gel with me. So I just have to pass on that one. Number nine is the newest favorite character. Uh, so this is not a crush, but this is a favorite character. And I'm going to go with Holly Gibney from Holly and all the books that preceded by Stephen King with the character Holly in it. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed my adventure this year in the All About Holly group where we read all the books in order until we got to Holly. Um, now she's such an interesting character. It was so awesome to see her growth um, from this vul vulnerable, shy, timid little creature in Mr. Mercedes to uh, where she ends up as Holly. Still vulnerable. Um, and still with all these issues, still with all these problems and yet at the same time she's so resourceful and smart and strong. Um, so, so just a, such an interesting character and I did love her. Uh, but yeah, not in the crush sense but uh, I'm looking forward, to, I'm really hoping that Stephen King brings his character back. And that is Holly. Okay, number 10 is a book that made you cry. Now, um, it was one of the other from Chad Lutsky. Um, a couple of books I've read by him this year so far that were kind of heartbreaking. Uh, but the one that I've chosen is a book called Stirring the Sheets. Now it's about an elderly man who works in a funeral home. Um, he has access to everything that goes in and out of the funeral home. And yeah, he lost his wife in a fire, in a car accident, uh, I think it was 10 years ago. And he cannot get over her. Um, it is just a tragic thing. He, he still her side of the bed, he's, he leaves it as it is, um, he won't make it up. So yeah, he's not getting on with his life. Um, and then one day he meets, uh, he finds a corpse that has the looks of um, his wife as a younger uh, bride. And he becomes sort of infatuated with this and takes the corp ho corpse home with him. But it's not what you think it is. Um, as this book is just so sad so emotional, so draining, and I cried. Um, and it's about loneliness and inability to let go, and maybe letting go. But it's a powerful book, and even though you could call it a horror, it's a sad horror. Um, it's, yeah, made me really, it, it, it hurt, it kind of hit me, and I highly recommend it for something completely different. Okay, number 11 is a little bit more happy and uplifting, a book that made you happy. So far this year, and uh, yeah, the horror comedy, sort of nice little combination between horror and science fiction, and that is Night of the Living Trekkies. And it is hysterical in places, it's a lot of fun, um, uh, where the, the zombie outbreak happens in the Star Trek convention. And it's a nice blending of horror, with zombie horror, and it's kind of gross and it's fun uh, with the Star Trek kind of uh, sci-fi vibes as well, with interesting characters. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one, um, but don't take it too seriously, really it is silly, <laughs> it is off the wall, but it's fun, I enjoyed it, that is Night of the Living Trekkies. Number 12 is the most beautiful book you've uh, bought this year, so far this year, or received. Now, as many of you know, I attempted, um, well I got to about 50 books, I was doing a Read What You Own challenge, uh, where you're not allowed to buy any more books until you've read, well, I initially said 100 books, <laughs> but I got to about 50, so that's okay. Um, so I didn't buy many books at the beginning of the year, um, I did kind of go on a little binge with uh, e-books, but not many physical books so far this year that I bought. Um, but I did receive a gift from my wife, and I absolutely love this cover. And that is Ray Bradbury from The Dust Returns. Now look at this cover, this hourglass, and the gold. Um, for me, yeah, it's just spectacular. Um, I love the skeletons with the hourglass. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful book. Yeah, so that's my answer for that one. And it was a gift. Okay, number 13 is what books do you need uh, to... <laughs> do you need to read by the end of the year? Okay, need is a very strong word there. Maybe you want. Need means you have no choice, you have to. Um, I've got like 300 plus books on my TBR on Goodreads. And so, yeah, I think I've just chosen five books here that are high priority for me 
They either have really heard about them on, on booktube, people have raved about them, people that I trust, and I'm really, like, I want to read these books. Uh, but need, ah, they could go on to next year as well, so let's see. But those books are, first of all, The Haunting of Valkwood by Gwendolyn Kist. Now this is about a haunting of an entire neighborhood. So not a haunted house or haunted hotel. If something happens to this entire neighborhood. And just this one, I can't remember which booktuber, I apologize. Just made it sound so awesome. And the second one, Anything by Chad Litsky. Um, so the next one I've got on my radar is of Foster Homes and Flies by Chad Litsky. But really, anything by him will do. I'm going to read one book by him every month. Because, yeah, it's fast becoming a top five author of all time. Um, and then, I've got Project Hail Mary uh, by Andy Weir. Now, this is just <laughs> the raving reviews that this book has received. It's Mark on Goodreads, what I hear about it. It sounds like an absolute science fiction masterpiece. So, if I'm going to go to sci-fi, I'd like to read this book. Another one, The, Re the Reformatory by Tenen Reeve Dew. Also, absolute rave reviews all over the place. Um, also horror, but it sounds like a book that's going to be kind of difficult to read, but an important book to read. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And finally, one that's just been in my head um, is Black Mouth by Ronald Malfi. And for me it also just gives off these serious it vibes. Uh, you know, Stephen King it. Uh, it just sounds horrific and fun and Good, good reviews on BookTube as well. Okay, and finally, just a couple of questions that I'm adding onto this, this thing because I want to talk about them. And I've seen a few BookTubers add a few things on. And number 14 is what is your favorite video made this year so far? And I thought that was a fun question. Uh, okay, I'm going through all my videos. But I think <laughs> the three videos that I made with my wife so far were my favorite. I love having her on my show, and it's just so fun to talk with my favorite person in the world about horror and about books, so that's cute. <laughs> so yeah, that's my favorite. Okay, next up, which video did you think would flop, uh, but did actually quite well? Now, I didn't think it would flop entirely, uh, but as a book review, they don't generally tend to do that well. And that is my video, uh, the book review, Shirley Jackson, <laughs> excuse me, Shirley Jackson, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Uh, did a hell of a lot better than I expected it to. But I have to add there as well from last year, from when I started on BookTube. It does blow my mind a little bit that the third video that I ever uploaded. Uh, okay, yes, it was my top 10 greatest horror novels of all time. That was my third video. Uh, lighting was terrible, sound was terrible, in my opinion, and yet it's got thousands and thousands of views and, and likes and, and lots of comments, so yeah, I, I find that a bit strange, but never mind, that's okay. Uh, but I'll still say, uh, maybe I should do a few more book reviews in the future, because uh, that one worked really well. Okay, and finally, just want to talk about some upcoming videos, upcoming videos you're excited to make. Obviously more videos with my wife, I'd love to do that, I'd always have fun with that. And also maybe more authors focused, uh, author centered videos, focused videos. But I was, I'm having a lot of fun doing those. Um, and then another thing, like looking at subgenres, yeah, looking at body horror videos, my favorite body horror videos, my favorite supernatural videos, my favorite post-apocalyptic videos. All those sort of things as well I'm quite keen to do I mean I've just recently did a video on creature feature uh, books and that was fun so I can look for all different options there it might be fun and also readathons and so on that I'm going to take part in and something I'm going to announce possibly at the end of next month uh, or sometime in August because I've got some plans for a, a readathon of my own something that I want to do so it should be fun. Okay everyone, so that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed that tag. Let me know what you think about my responses down in the spaces down below. And let me know if you've read any of those books. Um, give me some comments. I'd love to talk to you. And until next time, 
keep those pages turning. Okay, take care of yourselves and cheers.